Welcome to the Kirklees College Engineering Centre and our virtual open day for higher education. My name is Craig and I'm the programme lead for higher education here at Kirklees Engineering Centre and responsible for the delivery of the HNC, the Higher National Certificate, and the Higher National Diploma or HND in engineering. So what about uh, higher education courses that are available in engineering? Well, we deliver the Level 4 Higher National Certificate and we do that from September to June over a two year programme. And um, we also deliver the Level 5 Higher National Diploma that runs from January to December, again across two years. And we have two pathways available. We have mechanical engineering and electrical engineering. In terms of the mechanical engineering pathway, um, the topics you will um, cover will engineering maths. Um, unfortunately, engineering is all about maths. Engineering science, which is basically more maths. Mechanical principles, which is basically applied maths. CAD CAM, uh, so computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing technology. You'll look into materials technology, uh, the properties of engineering materials, manufacturing processes. You'll do some engineering design work. Um, you'll also conduct a research project. Um, you'll be looking into sustainability and reliability, maintainability. Industrial systems, uh, that could be anything from the sensors through to um, fluid mechanics, um, hydraulic systems, manufacturing systems. Uh, one of the mandatory units is engineering management. The expectation is that those moving on to level four, level five, level six qualifications, it's, you're expected to move into some sort of management role. So an appreciation of how projects are managed, how departments are managed is, is considered to be mandatory. You'll also, in terms of mechanics, will do thermodynamics and then virtual engineering, which is things like finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics, where you're building virtual models of products and systems and you're analysing those in terms of, um, in the virtual environment, in terms of things like loads, stress strain, uh, performance constraints, etc. So that's a quick overview of mechanical. In terms of the electrical pathway, there are some common units. Again, you've got maths, science, electrical principles, which essentially is applied mathematics. Uh, but then you've got some uh, very specific to the electrical pathway units, so things like circuit design, uh, programmable logic controllers, fault finding of electrical systems. Um, again, you'll do a research project, you'll look at sustainability, maintainability, etc. We'll look at industrial systems. And then we've got electrical power and storage, and again, engineering management and engineering design. So why choose Kirklees College and our engineering centre? Well, we've got excellent facilities. Uh, it's a dedicated engineering building um, just down the road from the football stadium in Hillsfield. Uh, we've got the latest industry standard CNC machinery and dedicated CAD CAM rooms, dedicated PLC rooms and electrical processing rooms. We've got excellent lecturers with extensive and relevant industry experience. Um, Majority of our lecturers are either uh, have an electrical bias or they have a mechanical bias. And in terms of the way the course has been built, you will be timetabled for one day a week of the two year programme for the HNC, and then again a one day a week for the further two years for the HND. This makes the course accessible to um, student finance funded, uh, for employer funded, and for apprenticeship groups. And so the higher level for the printer. Um, we have an excellent working um, working uh, history with uh, local companies um, around the Yorkshire region, uh, Syngenta, Reliance, the University of Huddersfield, companies, companies like Hovis and Coca-Cola. Uh, within the engineering centre, we, uh, we also have the Process Manufacturing Centre, the PMC, uh, which is focused in on um, process manufacturing in terms of production of things like Hovis and Coca-Cola, bottles of pop and baked bread. 
Moving on. Benefits of studying the course. Well, all the engineering study programmes build credits towards apprenticeships. So you can be doing a high level apprentice, um, apprenticeship whilst you're doing HMC, HMD. Um, the level four HMC meets entry requirements into university. It's considered to be the first year of a degree. And so many universities will often uh, intake HMC graduates direct onto the second year of a degree. The level five HMD is recognised as two thirds of an honours degree level qualification. Um, and some universities will uh, allow you to go straight into the third and final year of a degree programme. Um, most universities will give you the option of uh, just joining on the second year and indeed when I did this route uh, that's what I did. I, I entered from my HMD onto the second year of a degree programme because I wanted to study that content. So we have an excellent cohort of lecturing staff on our higher education provision. As you'd expect, highly qualified with relevant industrial experience. Uh, some of our, our some examples of the qualifications of our higher education staff: uh, postgraduate qualification engineering, 20 years professional engineering experience in reliability testing, measurement, and data analysis, along with formal teacher qualification and uh, half a decade of um, experience teaching. That would be me, by the way. Um, electrical test engineer with 20 years industry experience specialising power systems and 10 years teaching experience at FE and HE level. Um, uh, a lecturer with first class honours degree in electrical engineering, 12 years experience in offshore oil drilling technology and 10 years teaching experience up to degree level. A postgraduate engineer in analytical science uh, with an honours degree in environmental science and 11 years of teaching experience, also up to degree level. So we've got a great team here at the Engineering Centre and the, these guys really know their stuff. You're going to learn a heck of a lot from them. So we have a reading list. We provide a lot of our textbooks as uh, PDF documents that are available through our VLA system. Um, so do, these are just some samples of books that um, I carry around and consider to be my Bible. Um, so these are um, our recommended reading list. And as I say, we'll make these available to you in PDF form. What can you do after your course? Well. Um, Let's take me as an example. I did my HND uh, back in the mid 90s. I then progressed onto the second year of the uh, honours degree programme at a Red Brick University. I then progressed to Leeds University where I did um, a masters in um, a masters in research masters in, uh, in engineering. In this case, it was automotive uh, test and measurement. And then I did some postdoctoral research. Um, I moved into industry where I was a consultant engineer, um, basically teaching qualified engineers how to be better engineers in the field of uh, product maintenance, product reliability, product test and measurement. You could go on after completing either level four or level five onto a university degree programme, then onto a master's and then even onto a doctorate. Your career choices as a professional engineer are a lot more lucrative and a lot more varied. You can specialise, uh, you can go into management and become a team leader. You could pursue a chartered engineer status with the IMACE or the Royal Aeronautical Society um, or any of the other many, many engineering societies in the UK. And as I said already, the HE courses at Kirklees College are delivered through day release. So you're in college one day a week. And so are suitable for higher apprenticeships, employer funded learners or student finance. The majority of our students and cohort are funded direct by their employers and given a day a week to come into college. The higher engineering apprenticeships will, if that's the route you want to take, um, includes what's called a level four NDQ, which can be done over one to five years, but at the engineering centre, it typically aligns with the level four HMC, so it takes uh, 24 to 30 months for most learners. 
that includes a large number of additional workplace assessed units that you need to do on top of the level four HNC. So the HNC provides much of the knowledge based learning, the math skills, uh, the CAD CAM skills, etc. Um, the level five and the Q is more workplace based and because it's level four, level five, a lot of the units are more managing a team, managing a project. So the a higher level uh, workplace assessed um, type topics. If you're on a higher engineering apprenticeship and doing the level four MBQ, then your MBQ and the HMC are funded by um, the employer, by your employer, and also by the government through the levy. And the MBQ includes an endpoint assessment or EPA. In terms of higher engineering apprenticeships in the uh, Kirkwood College, uh, we do a level four MBQ in engineering manufacturing. Um, provide specialist technical support for engineers. Um, so you'll be helping your organisation to develop, produce or test new existing products or processes or procedures to meet uh, customer specification in terms of quality, cost and delivery. And you'll be doing so as efficiently and effectively as possible. You can see here that at level four, level five, your contribution to your workplace, your employer is a lot, um, is a lot greater, it's a lot more valued and truly my, the, the cohort that we have, they're earning really good money, they're well respected within the organisation, many of them have a team that they uh, manage and um, they're valued, that's why they're being funded to do this level four, level five. So if you've got any questions, um, please type them into the chat and we will do our best to answer them. Thank you for listening and I hope this has been informative and also enjoyable. OK, so we have quite a few questions to get through. I am mindful of time and um, if you could just type the course that your question relates to in your question, that'd be really helpful just to help Craig with the answers. Right, should we go over to Craig? Right. Hi, Craig, are you ready to go? Yeah, hi. Hi, guys. OK, right. First question. Do you have to have done a BTEC engineering or can I join the HNC with A-levels? You can join the HNC with A-levels. I would expect you to have uh, probably maths and physics um, as core content, as, as core courses, and I'd be expecting probably you know, BCD as a, as a minimum. Um, the maths is the most important thing, as you saw in the presentation. Um, uh, it's very engineering is naturally very maths uh, heavy and so um, those are the skills that we really look for in terms of uh, interview stage and in terms of entry. Okay thank you. Um, we've got somebody at the minute who currently works in engineering and are wanting to progress up the career ladder. Would you recommend the HNC as a route? Certainly, if they've already done a level three qualification and for level three, I consider that to be either A levels or a BTEC level three uh, in a technical qualification. Um, I have a student at the moment that did science at level three, so it doesn't necessarily have to be engineering if you've got the right work ethic. But yeah, um, I mean, it's a route I took when um, when I was young and a lot more attractive than I am now. Um, and so, yeah, I did the HNC, HND. I went on to a degree. I went on to my master's, uh, doctorate. And so the progression is there and the, the, the access in terms of future career. Um, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't be doing this job if I didn't believe in it. OK, is there an option to do the course of a one year full time because I'm not in employment at the minute? Um, we're looking at timetabling that. We've not started timetabling uh, for September properly, um, but my hope is, yes, we will run a two year programme for both the HNC, HND. But obviously that uh, that conversation is ongoing internally, but I do want to put a full time provision in place. Okay. I also add that uh, my intent is to build on that and it's not just HNC, HND, but I want to have um, a degree level offer um, built on top of that. Um, and I would like that to be a full time provision. OK, thank you. Um, do you have any specific links with unis for students to top up? Uh, yeah, um, I've got um, I've got reasonably good links with Huddersfield. Um, I, I would consider the head of school at Leeds University 
um, which is where I went to, um, um, I would consider him to be a personal friend. Um, and so Leeds would certainly uh, respect uh, the qualifications from Huddersfield, uh, from Kirkley, sorry. And Huddersfield have taken in quite a few of my ex cohort uh, graduates that have already you know, left the programme, have now progressed on to uh, degrees at Huddersfield. OK, and I do know the college is currently in discussions with Bradford University about progression routes for engineering students as well. So, yes, we're developing those links. Um, do you envisage first to first teaching will start again in September? Um, I think first to first teaching will start for the HE programme after Easter. And I, I'm, if the uh, rollout of the vaccine programme goes well, um, I can't say it's going back into lockdown. Um, certainly, my plan is we're going full time classroom based uh, back in September. But what we have learned during obviously what's been a very challenging year in education, um, I will still be running um, across the provision uh, all of our courses on Teams. So um, I, um, my team set up a laptop and a webcam and they actually record their lectures live. And, and so that becomes available and that's really come back and uh, come about because of student feedback, uh, particularly with a, a lot of the maths based content, um, they like the ability to go back and look at a lecture and just watch it over again and catch up on you know bits maybe they were confused about bits that were missed. And so my view is in terms of our engineering HD delivery that um, all of our content will be available as live lecture um, uh, videos. OK, we've got a question around assessment methods on the HNC. Is there a heavy emphasis on exams and what amount of commitment to work will it take away from teaching? Right, so there are no exams on the HNC or the HND, although I certainly have some views uh, that there will be some kind of exam based content. Uh, the assessments, the formal assessments are all assignment based. OK, um, right, Christian, I think this is the same guy that's in employment and um, he's asked a mature student will I be the only mature student and what's the class size? OK, so uh, um, my year twos, I've got a class size of 19 for the mechanical pathway. Um, uh, in, the, in their first year, we actually split that into two, uh, but with the whole COVID situation, we went down from 24 to about 19. So um, in my, in, on the electrical pathway, we've got three learners in year two. And um, this year I've got 11 learners on the mechanical and seven years on the um, electrical for year one. And typically we'd like to max out at about 12. Um, beyond that, I think it becomes a little bit unmanageable. Um, so that's in terms of class size. So there was another question, Sally. Uh, will I be the only mature student? Oh no. Uh, well, uh, this year I well I'm 48, and one of my students is 43. And so no. Um, actually, you will find that in certainly in terms of our current cohort, um, a lot of these are engineers that have maybe done a level three, gone into engineering, gone into industry. They now meet sort of middle management, sort of team leader status, and they're now coming back into education. Um, and yeah, so it's uh, it's very much. Um, I've got a couple of 18, 19 year olds, but the majority are sort of 20s, 30s. OK, um, how much tutor contact time do you get on the course? <laughs> All day, every day. <laughs> um, the way we run the course, so you then, typically each year group is on a one day day release. Um, and so you will have um, typically four units over the course of the day. We try to put the maths heavy content earlier into the day because you're fresher and then the more sort of practical stuff we live to the afternoon. Um, within the working day there are, is a tutorial and um, that's usually with me and uh, that's where we do catch up sessions and you know um, I, I suppose kind of pad um, helping you guys out if you've got particular issues we have one-on-one -on -one conversations uh, but generally you've got uh, about an hour and a half four times during the course of the working day. So okay. it's pretty long. We've got a couple of questions relating to the 11-4 apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, do we have employers recruiting at level four or do I need to find my own? Um, you're advised to go to the Gov UK website and um, there is um, all the apprentice uh, positions are advertised uh, centrally. Um, 
there are there is actually quite a lot of recruitment going on at the moment. Um, the, it's not as big as it perhaps it was, you know, maybe just before COVID, because I know a lot of companies are obviously struggling, they're on shutdown. Um, but uh, there is certainly recruitment out there. And uh, you, you've seen uh, a slide today with some of our major employers, and uh, they're certainly still recruiting and actively doing so. OK, and we also put all our vacancies on the college website as well. So if you go up there and um, as they come in, we post them on there. You can register with the apprenticeship recruitment team as well, and they'll let you know about vacancies to apply. Um, how long does the level four apprenticeship take, Craig? Um, the level four apprenticeship is uh, well, it's two years for the HNC. and um, the apprenticeship aspect of it also has the MDQ level four. Um, and that tends to be at Kirkley, it tends to be timetable over 30 months. And the reason for that is you complete your HNC, you've done that, and then you've got like six months afterwards to uh, mop up on the MBQ. And the number of units you do is roughly um, double uh, on the MBQ, but it's work workplace based. And so what you're doing in terms of the HNC, if you're clever about the units you choose and uh, the projects and the um, the stuff that you uh, decide and confirm with your employer, you can usually get a lot of the MD, HNC stuff overlapped onto the MDQ and make it work. So you, you basically double bubble your units across across the HNC and the MDQ. OK, um, so we've got a couple of questions left about applying that I will answer. Um, somebody's asked about the cut off date for applying. We don't have a cut off date in college. However, we do recommend people get their applications in as soon as possible um, to be able to guarantee to get an interview with a tutor. Um, you don't apply via UCAS, you apply via the college website direct. Um, if you go onto the website, find the course, you can apply via that. Um, Craig, thank you very much. That's all the questions that have come in. Um, so I will end the session there. Um, if you would like to attend another of our virtual open days or watch a previous event, then you can visit our website www.kirkleyscollege.ac.uk and go to the virtual open day page. Here you'll be able to book onto future events and there is a range of general presentations you can watch. There are also videos of all our centres on there so you can watch the video on the engineering centre. If you have any further questions, then you can email info at kirkleyscollege.ac.uk or call 01484 437070. Both that email address and that telephone number are available on the website. The lines are open till 8 o'clock tonight and they will reopen at 9 o'clock in the morning. I hope you found the event useful. A recording of this presentation will be posted next week. Thank you very much for attending.